shut this model down, I go to the models folder, right click, and do new, and select isopacite. I'll just call this ISO, and I'm going to choose my design as the top surface and my projection as the top soil, so that when I actually get the isopacite model, my or rather the sense of the points is actually going to be correct so when I actually see a positive value I know that that's a fill as opposed to a cut normally it would be around the other way because we're doing volumes but in this situation it will be fine so I press OK what Enforce has done is it's projected both services vertically up and down so that it can create more points where necessary and that we get an accurate difference model, height difference model between the two surfaces so if I turn off point markers and the triangles, we should get it now a smooth shaded plot. I'm going to just turn off the shading. Okay, so now we can see contours of depth. If I modify the contour intervals <coughs> and the colors, so I'll have the normal contour in white every half a meter. I'll use a slightly larger height annotation to one decimal place. And I'll make sure the text offset is zero so that when we annotate the contours we actually burn that into the uh, contour itself. Under highlight we'll do the same. So that in magenta, so that in every uh, meter. Oh, so that every two meters. Under height annotation with a zero text offset to one decimal place. So I press OK. Then we can see our contours to annotate these so I, I need to thread them so I go back up to contours come down to threads create same options as before I will curve these ones press OK alright now as you, if you zo zoom in now you can see we actually have two sets of contours on the screen one of the threaded are the ones that live in the dedicated CAD back cloth the continuous curved contours and the quick draw contours here which are straight so need to turn the quick draw off, so if I press Alt and F9 and tick contours, we should return back to a nice threaded contour model. All we need to do now is annotate it. So we'll go up to contours, come down to threads, annotate by strike line. And all we need to do is strike a line through the intervals we want to annotate. Okay. So we can see here we have three meters of material that we need, three and a half and four. Okay, so that's our ISO backup model created and annotated. All we need to do now is to create a, a drawing that brings the two together. So if I go down to drawings, click new, select a template. the ISO plot. If I go to the camera, I've already got a viewport there, so I'm just going to go to settings and I'm going to go to the DTM and I want to see the I want to see the ISO backlight surface contours and also our design. Go to the sighting tab, press auto. I'm not sure what scale I'm going to need to work at, at the moment, so I'll leave it at one to hundred, press OK. You can see 1 to 100 is obviously far too great, so I go back to settings, site team, make that 1 to 500, and there we go. We have a final finished model with our design surface showing the cut and the fill, and also the depths of cut and fill necessary. So we've got our 2D plot which shows how the material uh, changes in terms of the cut and fill depth. What would also be nice to see is how it changes in 3D. So to do that, we come out of the drawing, go back to the design, I need to turn its triangles on here, so under Alt F9, I'll just do that. So its triangles are turned on. And then we click the models folder, and we then select the design model and the original OGL. Having selected them, we go to the camera, we can see the two overlapping. If I now go to the view menu, I can come down to 3D model. If I maximize the screen, we can see obviously both surfaces together. Um, to make a contrast though, I'm going to just change the color of the design surface. If I make it a deep green, 
yeah, we can see it obviously contrasts a lot better against the, the tan of the, uh, the original surface. Not quite so clear though as to what's going on still. So I can also turn the contours on. So if I select the design surface, I can say plot the contour lines and I'll have them in white. There we go, there's the contours. Obviously they're falling at a very regular gradient, 1 in 30 hopefully. We can also say don't show the the topsoil model. I'll say none. And instead I can show grid lines for it. Every 10 meters I can put those in white as well. Okay, so there's various ways of playing around with the 3D viewer, including exaggerating the heights to help communicate your changes in models in design. So the 3D modeler allows you to explore your uh, your designs in uh, various angles and in various ways so that you can hopefully communicate to your clients what you need to do in terms of the design process. And that concludes the tutorial on simple surface design.